a lot of questions and I've got a lot of answers. So I thought I'd make a video, a question and answers video if you like. It might become a regular thing, I don't know. So here goes, let's, let's hear some of the questions you've been asking me and uh, I'll answer them as honestly as I possibly can. Lee Lawson asks if the owner of the whole world gave you permission to go anywhere on any part of his or her land, where would you go? Now firstly, I don't think there is an, o an owner of the whole world. <sighs> if there is, I'm guessing it's God. And if it is God, I wouldn't really want to do anywhere in the world. I'd like to do heaven. That'd be good, wouldn't it? You know, just outside the pearly gates. I bet loads of stuff get dropped there. Lots of coins and things. I'd like to do outside the pearly gates. But if it has to be on, on the earth, I'd say... I'd like to do Buckingham Palace grounds, um, that's always fascinated me. Or maybe Saddam Hussein, you know, his palace where he lived, there must be some things there. He always had gold and stole things from everybody, didn't he? Joe Hardy wants to know, have you ever put your hand in poo when detecting in grass? Yes, I have, Joe. But not dog poo or human poo. In grass, just probably cow poo, okay? If you're talking about on the ground in general, oh, the, the list is endless. Obviously snail poo, I must have gone near that a few times. Deer poo, wild boar poo, that's one of my favourites. I used to like doing that because it's never too soft and it's quite bulky. It's just like picking stones up, so you don't mind that too much. Um, yeah, deers and wild boar more than anything. Rabbits, don't forget rabbits. Nigel Cullum asks, Dan, referring back to the geocaching, have you done any more? And are you kicking yourself because you didn't try it in the Cairn Gorms? No, I haven't tried it anymore. And no, I'm not kicking myself because I didn't try it in the Cairn Gorms. I had more important things on my mind than uh, looking for little geocaches. It is good fun. But the main reason I did them videos is just to make people aware of that hobby because I think it's quite an interesting hobby and a very good one for kids. You know, if you're going out for a little walk with your kids, something for them to do while you... Kids don't want to walk, do they? But if they think they're going to find some treasure at the end of it, spot on. So I like the hobby, geocaching. Whether I'll do it again or not, I probably will. I probably will, but uh, I've done the ones around here. But we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's an interesting hobby. And here's a serious question from Stu Mandry. Here's a question. What period of British history interests you the most and why? I would say the Victorian times. And I'll tell you why. Be before I was into... I've always been interested in history. Well before metal detecting. And when I was about 23, for a few years, I did my family tree. And I was so interested in my family tree. And, you know, I found out relatives living in the Victorian times. And I used to go to the houses I used to live at. I used to go to the areas. I used to go to the graveyards. And I used to try and imagine being one of my family back then. So I'd like to think it certainly interests me the most, yes. Victorian times, I'm telling you, it's the future. Or the past. You know what I mean. William Riley Forrest Klingsmith. Lovely name. Can you burp the alphabet, Dan? No, no, I can't do it. I've no burps in me, and even if I did have, I probably wouldn't be able to do that because I'm just not rude enough. You know, I was brought up with manners, me. Where I come from, you don't burp, and you certainly don't burp the alphabet. In fact, where I come from, you don't even know what the alpha, how to say the alphabet. A, B, F, G, C, D, E. I can't remember the alphabet, so no, I couldn't burp it. And I can't say it backwards, so don't ask me to. Z, T, no. Moving on. Back to another serious one from John Hendricks. Since you have experience with a broad array of detectors, Euro Ace, AT Pro, XP, Deus, etc, etc. Maybe you could go over how you personally set each one up. The settings you use for particular hunts. And maybe some tips on target identification based on the numbers on the screen. No. And I'll tell you why, John. 
Um, I don't do that, and you'll notice in my videos, I don't go into depth on the machine. Like some people do, and you know, if that's what they want to do, fine. But I don't see the point in me going into detail on the machine I'm using when maybe 3% of who are watching the video will get any use out of that. 97% um, of people won't care. You know, they're not, they're not interested in how the dais does if they've got a garret. So I try to stay away from that. It's not that I don't appreciate the metal detectors I use and I don't want to tell you about them. It's just I don't want to bore everybody else with the details. And every machine's different, so I couldn't possibly go into too much detail. Sorry. James Belts. Belts, belts, belts. James Belts, do you like wearing beards? As you can see, James, I don't really suit beards. I did used to have a beard when I was young, but I couldn't grow a proper one, so it was like a, a pencil one going down here. Like, people in England will know who I'm talking about, the Yorkshire Ripper. I looked like the Yorkshire Ripper. Um, no, I don't suit a beard. I can't grow one properly because I don't get anything here unless I put white shaving cream on my face and look like a nipple. Victoria Gunter asks, when you're out alone filming and talking in deep conversation to the camera, has anybody, you should have put a comma there, Victoria, has anybody ever come up to you doing so? Kim, you spelt Kate come wrong, Victoria. And if so, did they think you'd gone mad not knowing what you're doing? Firstly, I'll apologise for correcting your English, Victoria, because you're clearly not English. I think you must be German. Secondly, yes, I've, I think I've only had one occasion where somebody has caught me filming when I didn't know they were there. And that was in Germany when... Oh, I did the Gangnam Dance. That was it. I did the video with the Gangnam Dance. And I didn't show it on camera, I didn't get it on camera. But as I was, as I was filming, about a hundred teenaged lads came running right in front of me, basically. And they were all looking at me strange, because I'm stood there doing the Gangnam dance, and they're doing like a, a run, you know, like a sports day run or something through the middle of the woods. So I did get some pretty weird looks that day, and that's one of the few times I've been quite embarrassed on film. Mike Davis asks, Dan Holdsworth, are you ever going to feature your mum in a cooking video with you? A little family cooking video can be fun. No, it is never going to happen, I can assure you. There might be a family one. I won't rule that one out. I'm off to see Shallow Shoveler Shane and my cousin in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll do a cooking video with uh, Shallow Shoveler Shane. That might be a bit of fun. Stay tuned. Thanks for the idea. Are you up for that, Shane? This is my favourite question I've got so far, from Jake Matthews. What's your favourite international bear? Right, Jake, my favourite international bear is probably a port... No, no, a grizzly bear. I've always, I've always liked grizzly bears from, you know, that Adams... I can't remember. Grizzly Adams programme. I always liked grizzly bears. But I think what you're trying to ask me is what's my favourite international beer? Now, I know you're knocking on in teenage years now, you'll be drinking soon, legally. So I suggest you learn how to spell the word beer, otherwise your friends are going to take the mickey out of you all the time. And when you have learnt how to spell beer, come back and ask me the question again, and I might answer the question you want me to answer the question to. Grizzly bear, Jake. Paul Adams, if you could give anyone in the world an atomic wedgie, who would it be and why? I've sat and I've thought about this for five minutes trying to think who I'd pick. I'll be completely honest, I can't think of a single person I'd want who I hate that much to want to give them an, atom an atomic wedgie. I don't, I don't hate people. You know, I'd, I haven't got a problem with anybody in this world. Certainly not to an extent I'd want to like give them an atomic wedgie. No, I'd have to leave everyone out of that one, sorry. Maybe myself on a video, just, you know, just for views. Jacob Morse asks, If you were to name a dog, what would his name be? 
I've always wanted a dog. Never had a dog in my entire life and I've always wanted one. I would get one now, but with the lifestyle I lead, going travelling quite a lot, there's no chance I could have one. But if I had a dog, do you know what I'd call it? Dog. Every dog in the world has got a name. And the you know, loads of dogs are called the same thing. Do you know any single dog that is just simply called dog? So yeah, I'd go along with dog, or if it were a female, bitch. So dog or bitch, that's what I'd call my dog or bitch. Tom Millward, do you have a different hobby besides detecting? No, because it takes up all my time 24 seven. Not the detecting part, but the the computer part, the editing part. And if, if I had to choose another hobby, that is me other hobby is basically you know, like web design, video making, things like that. I'm constantly learning, like recently I've learned how to use Photoshop. Not brilliantly, but I can use it now. Um, I just like to keep learning things to do with media all the time. So that's me other hobby. Bit boring, really. John Scott Arnold asks, You love food, football and beer. Have you thought about doing a vid about an event that celebrates all of these passions? Well, let's give it a go, shall we? I'll be honest with you, I found the initial setup, the actual placing of the can, the food, and then the kick quite pleasurable but once you've done it two or three times which I did off camera it does get a bit tedious so no I don't think it's I don't think I'll be mixing the three um, loves in my life together like that again my buddy super drew wants to know Andrew Brigham if the aliens landed tomorrow and said they'd answer one question for you what would you ask well I'd obviously ask what everybody would ask them can I metal detect your land wouldn't that be great, being able to metal detect on a different planet where you know they've got metal because they've made ships out of metal? Yeah, that'd be really cool, I'd like that. Like in Roswell, when that ship crashed and all the aliens died and the government took them and stuff, they had like tin foily made uh, spaceships, didn't they? And when you crunched it up, it just went back out again. Yeah, I'd like that. I wouldn't mind finding a bit of that scrunchy stuff, you know, but in like a gold. Yeah, that'd be nice. Dave Hopkins. If you could go back to any point in history to live the rest of your life, where and when would it be? I'd have to choose dinosaur times. Because there were less people on the planet then, so, you know, less queuing and things. I don't like queuing at all. Um, you wouldn't have any public transport problems. You wouldn't have any of these uh, government people telling you what to do and charging you tax and all that rubbish. If, you know, presuming mother dinosaur was away and you could get a dinosaur egg, think at size of your eggs for breakfast. So much more going on in dinosaur days, I'm telling you, it's so much more relaxed. Basically, every single problem there's ever been doesn't exist back, doesn't exist in dinosaur times. No wars, apart from that caveman over there. Yeah, dinosaur times, I'm telling you, it's the future. Well, the past. Well, you know what I mean. James Belts. Again, you've already asked one, James, about my beard. James Belts. If a magic genie granted you three wishes, what would they be? I'd wish for each of my three children to have one of the wishes they could make a lot more use of it than I can. I don't need wishes, I, I don't wish for anything, to be honest with you, I'm happy. I, for, I get a kick out of life by having to struggle through life. I, I don't want anything handed on a plate, I, I want to... I like the challenge of life, if that makes any sense. So bring it on, just keep hitting me with problems and solutions and new ideas and the future and I, I'm not a, 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 a I'm not a materialistic person 
Um, if I've got it, I've earned it. If I haven't got it, so what? I'm happy at the end of the day. That's all that counts, isn't it? So, one wish each to my children. So that's it for today's questions and answers. I'm hoping to make this a regular thing because it's quite easy for me to do and I quite enjoy it. It's, it's quite interesting. So, if you've got any questions, um, ideally join my Facebook group bleeps are us there's a comment there's a link in the description and there's a document on there where you can leave your comment leave your questions that's the easiest way for me if not, if not you can email me at deepdiggerdan at hotmail.co.uk but please make sure you put on the title q and a questions and answers so that i know um, you can ask your question there or you can put it in the comment below the only problem with that is I might, I won't know whether it's something I should answer in the comments or I should put into a video, so ideally not in the comments, but if that's the only way you can do it, do that. So thanks for joining me guys, I hope that was something to give you. Loads of metal detecting trips planned now, It just got, the list goes on and on and on. Um, there's I think four planned for February now, one definite for March and two to Germany, hopefully, in April. So, bring it on. A few more weeks and we'll be out metal detecting again. Until then, you're stuck with this, I'm afraid. See you next time. Bye-bye.